cool. Okay. So, um, great. Uh, does everybody here know uh, what this presentation is going to be about? Uh, HTML. HTML. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? CSS. Yeah. Okay. So today's presentation is an introduction to HTML and CSS. Um, we're not going to be covering JavaScript. We're not going to be covering really anything like logical, right? Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making pretty websites, right? Uh, so what I want you guys first to do is uh, find this link. Um, can you guys see that from there? Yeah. Okay. Um, Nate. Uh, I wonder if I can zoom in. Hey, Pramod, do you know if I can zoom in on the Mac? Control. No, no, no. But that that changes the size of the page. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh God, <laughs> that's like the worst thing you could say. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Um, right. So this is the link you guys want to go to. Um. And basically, just download the whole repository. Uh, do you guys know how to work with Git? Yeah, in general. Um, if you don't know how to work with Git, that's okay. Um, uh, I think there should be just a download button, right? You can also just download it, right? Download the zip and then save it to any folder on your desktop anywhere. Just remember where that folder is. I, I've seen people a million times like download something and put it somewhere and forget where it is and not know how to actually put So please do that. Um, yeah, I'll give you like a minute to do that. Huh? Oh, just download this entire thing. This entire thing. So if you, yeah, right. So cool. All right, I don't care. Um, right. So if you click clone or download, you should be able to get the entire contents of everything on this page. Oh, pretty standard. There it goes. Yep. Okay, can I move on? Is that okay? Cool. Um, right. Okay, so now I have to do that myself. Um, Right, I'm just gonna git clone it into the directory I want. Okay, cool. I have it here. Okay, awesome. So now I want you guys to open up um, the folder inside uh, the code editor of your choice. Right. So I use Atom. A lot of people use Sublime. That's okay. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, so I just want you to open up that directory and uh, you know, just how, however you feel comfortable opening up code. Um, right. Uh, any of you guys not have a code editor, by the way? Okay, you don't? Okay. Um, and you don't either? Okay. Um, do you have a computer with you? Okay, cool. Um, can you just download Sublime Text? And uh, an officer should come around and help you out with that if they're not. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you guys who have worked in, who have coded or even written websites before, today's presentation is going to be starting from scratch. Like, we're starting from the very beginning. Um, so, uh, yeah. Please don't get bored. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Um, I mean, so it it's not necessarily better or worse. Uh, I would say it's better for learning how to code in the future, right, using Git. But if you don't know how to use Git right now, that's okay, um, because Git is a really complex tool. So right now, all you really need to do is just download it. Um, yeah. Cool. Right. Did he get that, by the way? Cool. All right. Um, 
Okay. So I'm assuming everyone has a code editor now, right? Um, probably. Okay. Cool. So what I want you to do is open up that directory, um, 01 HTML and CSS. I want you to open that up in a code editor, right? And go to the complete folder and check out index.html. Okay. So this is this is this basically the directory that we have here uh, describes um, the entire project, right? And we have a complete version which is already finished, right? That way you guys have something you can look at. And we have a tried version where there's no code in it yet, but a set of instructions that you can look at at any time, even if I'm not talking, to help yourself build this thing, right? So uh, what I want you to do right now is go to a web browser, right? Uh, I'll be using Google Chrome, and then opening up, um, not sure how to do it in here. Right, okay. Opening up the complete project in the web browser. So for me, that would be going to file, open, gt web dev code, index.html. Yeah, it's under the complete folder, right? So basically the complete folder has a complete version of the project we'll be making today. And the tried folder has nothing. <laughs> but it has instructions though. So if you want to build it on your own, you can build it on your own. Um, we'll be going over the instructions step by step here with me talking through it. So if you don't want to do it on your own, that's cool too. Um, yeah. So the complete version of the app that we'll be building today is basically going to be... Um, this three-page layout, right, where you click sign up, right, you can sign up, blah, 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 right, you don't actually have to type anything in because we don't have JavaScript running in the background. It's literally just HTML and CSS, which, for those of you who don't know, is basically the content and the design of the website and none of the interactivity or the logic of the website, right? Um, so, basically, it's just, it's just going to be a straight-up messenger clone. Um, it's going to have all these messages we have here because we put that in the instructions too. Uh, you guys can type out whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, none of these buttons actually work. But uh, basically what we want you guys to have by the end of this is, hey, you know, I can make something that looks like Messenger without really trying that hard, right? Um, and that's entirely possible. And that's what we're going to be doing and try it. So uh, uh, you can close out of sign up now. Uh, just keep the browser open anyway. Uh, now I want you guys to go back to the code editor and go to try it. Um, open up instructions, and uh, we're going to start from here. Uh, anybody lost or um, need any more time, by the way? Okay, Jackson, what's up? Huh? Oh, cool. Oh, okay. I, th I thought you were lost, and I was like, that, that's, a, that's a bad sign. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, all right, cool. So everyone have instructions open, by the way? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so step one is just initializing HTML. So I want you guys to also open up index.html to the side, right? That way you guys can flip back and forth like this. Um, if you're like really cool, you can use control tab. Like if you're less cool, you can use your mouse, right? Um, right, so uh, I want you to copy everything underneath um, step one besides the comment index.html. And I want you to copy paste it into index.html. Um, so the way this whole instruction file is laid out is that each comment describes where you're going to be pasting the code into, right? We already have all the files created in the directory for you. Uh, we just kind of want you to be able to see where you're going to be putting it. Um, so yeah, once you're done copying and pasting, um, uh, that's, that's basically just step one. Uh, uh, what I want you guys to know at this point is that uh, basically there's a couple tags that you're always going to have in an HTML document the HTML tag, the head tag, and the body tag, right? Um, HTML, uh, the HTML tag basically tells the browser that, hey, this is an HTML page, right? So you pretty much need it um, just so that the browser knows how to read it properly. Um, and then the head tag is basically what contains metadata about the actual document. So anything you write in the head tag is not going to show up on your page, but it's going to be helpful for your page to parse through more information, right? So if you have a head tag, this is where you often see JavaScript links or uh, CSS links or otherwise you often see like the title of the web page, right? So um, like a messenger clone would have the name my message or something like that, right? Oh, zoom in? Oh, okay. Cool. All right, so uh, 
Yeah. I have like 2050 vision and I clearly need to see things bigger. Oh, uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, never mind. Bad joke. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so finally there's a body tag, right? Body tag is essentially where you put all the content on the page. So everything you see on a web page is going to be inside the body tag. Um, that's, just, uh, that's just generally what you want to follow. You're always going to have this setup, so there's really no need to veer off it. Um, so uh, finally, now, now we can go on to step two. Uh, by the way, in every one of these steps, if you guys have any more questions and like I clearly am not helping you guys out or you guys need more help uh, there's gonna be links attached and please check out those links because uh, some of these links come in handy no matter how uh, experienced you are as a web developer so I find myself accessing this website developer.mozilla.org like literally like every other day um, it's also called MDN um, and uh, I also find myself on W3 schools have any of you heard of W3 schools anyone Okay, cool, right? So W3 Schools is uh, pretty big too. It's really helpful. It's nice and pretty and makes things easier to understand. Um, so please check out those websites for more resources. Also use Google as much as you can. It's your best friend. So um, so for step two, we're going to be giving a title to our Messenger clone, <coughs> right? So if you want, you can copy and paste this tag right here on line 22 straight inside the head tag of index.html or... You can type it out yourself because it's not that complicated, um, right? So what we have here is an opening tag, right? What I'm hovering over, and a closing tag, right? Uh, that's just the way that HTML is constructed. That's just something that every single HTML tag has, right? Um, uh, it's not. That's that's actually a good point because even though it's not indent sensitive, the reason why we stick to using indentation is because otherwise um, it's going to be like it's just going to be painful to see. Like, you're not going to be able to read it. It's like not having paragraphs in a book, right? Um, what, what's your question? Oh, okay. Huh? Oh, Jade. Okay. 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 Um, all right. So that's a, that's a good point, actually. Um, if you do want indentation and you want, um, like, uh, white space sensitivity, Jade is a pretty useful tool. Um, that's a little bit more complex than a lot of the stuff we'll be covering here, but Jade is basically something called a templating engine, right? Templating is um, just another tool that's built on top of HTML that parses back down to HTML anyway. So, I mean, if you guys want, you can look up Jade HTML. Um, we won't be covering that today, but it's pretty cool. It also uses indentation. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, on step three uh, in the instruction file, uh, we're going to be adding some elements to our body tag. Woohoo! Okay, so basically, uh, now we actually have real content. Um, which we're going to be putting in between lines 5 and 8 in the index.html page, right? Uh, I'll give everyone a minute to do that. Anyone got any questions, by the way? Okay, cool. Um, so now what I want you guys to do is uh, I want you guys to go back to uh, Google Chrome and open up the file again. Um, it was one of my recently closed tabs, so I'm just going to undo it. Oh, whoops. Never mind. Um, so this is the complete version. I want to go to the try it version, right? So I'm just going to take that, uh, take out complete, <laughs> move it to try it. Oh, we didn't build message.html yet. Uh, change it to index.html. And this is what we should have right now, right? Um, this is pretty much like one of those plain text websites from like the early 90s, right? When people didn't really know how to make things look good on the internet, right? Um, basically, right now it's all just HTML and we don't really even have that much to talk about. Um, so I think this would be a good time to introduce you guys to something which is known as the developer console. Um, anybody here heard of the developer console? Inspect, okay, okay, inspect. Um, so, <laughs> woo, woo, yeah. Um, so we, yeah. So developer console is um, basically a web developer's best friend. Um, in a browser, uh, sometimes you need to be able to see the source code of something, or even the source code of something that you might own, or even the source code of a different website like Facebook.com or something. Um, and uh, how are you going to do that, right? How are you going to access that source code? Uh, so one, you could right click and then click inspect. 
right? And it takes you right there. And this is um, what we have. Um, here is the developer console. Or if you want, uh, in Google Chrome, you can go down here on the uh, menu, go down to more tools, and click on developer tools. Um, so those are two ways to get the developer console, right? Uh, so depending on your browser, uh, you might have a really hard time accessing developer console. Um, Safari might make it harder. IE might make it a little bit harder. Um, but Google Chrome is beautiful for that. Uh, basically, uh, developer console allows you to access the source code uh, as it's being run live. So if you hover over any of these elements, it's going to show you where it shows up on the page. right? So uh, if you take a good look, at the right hand side where the developer console is, that's literally exactly the index.html page you just made. Right? Uh, if we hover over the h1 tag, it highlights the h1 tag. If we hover over the paragraph tag, it highlights the paragraph tag. Um, this thing's going to come really handy, and we're probably going to go into it again later in the presentation. Um, for now, I just want you to keep that in mind so that you know the next time you're building something, you take a look at that when something's not working. Right? Um, any questions? Okay, cool. Uh, so let's make a new page now um, so that we're not really limited to just index.html and just like a single page website. We're trying to make this messenger clone, right? Oh, go for it. Uh, What's your question? Where's the, where can you see the title? Uh, the title? Okay, um, the title is right here. Right, okay, okay. That was a good question, actually. Um, I should have covered that. So anytime you change a title, it's going to show up in the new tab or like um, depending on the window you're in could show up in the window right up here. So uh, yeah, uh, you can name your title anything. It doesn't have to be my message either. So in step four, we're going to be making a new page. Uh, this is going to be where we make new users, basically like a sign up. So what I want you guys to do is open up create user <laughs> and copy paste everything from step four into create user. It's going to be very similar to index.html because right now we don't have anything new yet. Um, yeah. Yeah, copy everything but the double slash comments. Uh, say it again. Oh, just, just for future reference, by the way, if you have comments in HTML files, you don't comment like you do in other languages. Um, comments are basically done with a less than sign, exclamation point, hyphen, hyphen, type whatever you want, hyphen, hyphen, and then a greater than sign. Right? Um, so yeah, don't don't get tripped up and then use like uh, like a different languages comments because then it will show up in your web page and it will look really ugly. Um, I've done that before. So yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so now we want to make a link between index.html to create user.html. That way we're not just having floating pages. So what I want you to do is go to step six and copy the tag ahref, right? Um, I'll cover that in a minute and put that in the body right below the header tags. Um, So for a quick summary on the A tag, the A tag is essentially just, A stands for link. I mean, I, I don't know how A stands for link. I mean, maybe it should be like L stands for link, but I mean like LI already stands for list, so, um, hey, what's up? Oh, A stands for anchor, cool. Okay, so A stands for anchor. Um, and uh, finally, uh, href is essentially just, um, I, I don't know entirely what H means. It might be HTTP, but it's like a reference, right? So basically, this is the document it's referring to. Um, so this anchor is going to be hidden, create user.html, and the text for it's going to be sign up. So this is how you essentially make a link. Um, I'm going to cover classes a little bit later, so you don't have to worry about that right now. But uh, if, you, if you can, please go back to the browser and then change index.html to message.html. Oh. Oops. Never mind. It's create user My bad. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, so href is used for links. Okay. Um, I I've literally never seen href used for much else. Um, 
uh, if anyone has any objection to that, like I, I've literally only seen href used for links. Um, but basically, um, it allows you to create a hyperlink from the current page you're on to whatever you actually type inside of the string, right? So we put create user in there, right? And it's start at index.html. So now if you click down index.html, it'll take you to create user. So over here we have create user, right? Oh, whoops. Oh, oh, whoops, whoops. Okay, yeah, I screwed that up. Yeah, I screwed that up. Um, we want to put that in index.html. My bad. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for mod. Um, but I mean, yeah. If I if I'm going too slow or too fast, by the way, anyone let let me know. Um, yeah. So I'm not going too slow. Okay. Sweet. Um, what, what what's your question? Yeah, they're, okay, so they're relative to the current page, right? Um, that's why we don't have to say the entire file path, right? Like normally, you know how like, uh, you, you see like at the top of my window right here, I have this giant file path to this directory, right? You don't have to do that entire file path for href just because it's relative to the current page. So it already knows you're in this directory, so all you really need to say is that, hey, we're pointing to something in the same directory. Um, finally, uh, I think your question earlier was, can you link to websites outside of your website? And the answer is yes, you can do that. You just need to actually have the link, and you actually need to have access to the link, right? Um, or else it's going to be broken, right? Um, well, the actual the link won't be broken, but it might take you somewhere that will be like, hey, you can't even access this or something like that, right? Um, so yeah, just you can, yeah, you can link anywhere you want. Um, okay, so. Let's move on to building an actual form, right? So what I mean by form essentially is a form in HTML is anything that accepts input, right? Um, so I don't know, have, have you guys heard of the form tag before? Have you guys seen HTML forms? Okay, cool. Um, I got a couple nods, um, and I'm sure like there was a lot of silent nods too. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what we want to do is take everything from underneath the comment right here uh, it's line 66 on my page. It's in step six. Copy all of that and then uh, everything down to the body and take that and put it into createuser.html. Right. We're basically going to be making what you saw on the front page after we clicked sign up where it had the username, the password, and the other fields that you enter. Right. Um, so just for a quick summary of some of these tags, a label tag is basically just it's just like a caption right so usually you use a label for inputs you might also use it for an image you might use it for anything but um, it, it just goes nice with uh, something like an input because in an input um, you might not necessarily be saying um, like username after it right um, it's just a little convenience that we have right uh, an input tag is where we accept the typing the text right that's why we have a type equal to text here because it's only going to take a text field. Um, I think I should probably just open it up so you guys can see it. Um, here. Right. So uh, in the input tag for uh, username, it was text, right? So it accepts text. Uh, but on the other hand, the input tag for password is type password, right? Um, if you type in the password field, you're going to see um, the convenient little dots or like the little stars that you see in uh, password forms online, right? So usually when you see it on a website, they're not like coding in little shapes. Like that's just how, that's just an input tag that's provided by the HTML specification. It's very cool. Um, and we only talk about a couple types here, including submit, which is just a submit button. Um, but there's like a whole range of input types that are really helpful. Um, I love using like a bunch of different input types because I find there's like a million that you don't even know exist. So um, there's also like an input for slider, right? So you can have like a little slider that looks really pretty, uh, makes you look like you're like like the best web developer ever when you really didn't even do anything, right? Um, right? So like I have this like little slider and like it looks like I have like this audio thing, right? I didn't even do anything. Um, so, right? So 
Right. Uh, basically, yeah, input's really useful. Just remember input. Um, uh, you put inputs in forms. Uh, yeah, so any questions? Uh, label is, uh, usually you use label as like captions, right? So you put like label next to username, right? Uh, so if you see how, uh, how it's formed here, um, label shows up right before the input tag, and then it also shows up right before the input location on the web page, right? Uh, the main difference I can say between label and uh, password is that if you have label, usually you specify um, what, what I guess, element it's for. So we said username here, and we also have username as the ID here. So it, it's, it, it goes hand in hand. And another thing is compared to the paragraph tag, the paragraph tag actually takes up an entire block of space this long, but the username tag only takes up as much space as its word requires. Um, Pramod? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um. Okay. Um. Dave, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So how does it know where to put it on the actual for submit, how does it know to put it right next to the current um, password? Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, so one thing you have to know is that uh, much of it, just like much of it is semantic, right, much of it is also naturally how you would read like a paper, right? So if you have a form here, right, the label username shows up first, right, left to right. And then this is also where the form is located on the page. So let me just show you on the developer console, actually. Um, so header is first, right, at the top left corner, right? And the reason it takes up the entire space is because the header tag is um, something, it has a CSS attribute called uh, display block. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of display block, but basically that means that it covers the entire range of the page width-wise. Um, and then after that, the sign up also comes uh, directly below it because it's the next thing on the page. And uh, everything inside the form is sequential, left to right, just like you would read on a page. So um, yeah, it's just normal reading order, essentially. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? Wait, sorry. I've I, I blanked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Can you ask that one more time? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's that's a good question. You don't because that's what we have CSS for. Um, yeah, so we're going to add the CSS in real soon. I've been taking it a little bit slow now, but I think you guys kind of get the gist of like what tags are, right? So I'm going to... I'm going to stop covering like some of the more specific parts about tags so that we can get to CSS and actually discuss how how to make this thing not look like, you know, somebody somebody just like threw it together in their basement somewhere. Okay, so um so oh by the way, if you have any more questions that I can't answer, just look at these links too. Um we're adding literally um at like in literally every section in this page, uh there's links to help you out. So, on steps Okay, okay. On step seven, uh, we're actually going to be adding some styles, just like you were talking about, right? Um, so um, we want to put this style tag, um, we want to put it in the head tags of createuser.html. So just head on over to createuser.html, and right under the title, uh, it's line five on my uh, editor, it might be different for you, just stick the style tags right in. Uh, yeah, so CSS is a pretty, uh, it's, it's easy to get into, hard to master kind of thing. Um, and uh, 
it's the syntax is definitely different from HTML. You're not using tags anymore, um, but there's several ways to specify what you, you're talking about on your in, uh, on your HTML page in CSS. So one way is you could be talking about all headers, right? So if we had more than one header, um, that uh, that uh, that CSS would apply to that other header too, right? Um, but uh, on the other hand, if we had something like a class, right? Uh, we don't have class here. I think. Oh, actually, we do. Uh, like a button that would apply to uh, exactly whatever has button as its class, right? So there's many ways to specify what elements you want to style. Um, now, if you save this document and then reload it, um, it's going to be a really dark blue. Um, you probably shouldn't be able to read anything here, or not easily. Yeah. Anybody behind? Anybody needs some help? Uh, can I can I answer any questions? Yeah. What's up? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Go for it. Can you can you go over like why we put this style on the head? Like the implementation of it. Okay. Well, I I would have no idea why you put the Okay, that, that's actually um, that's a good question. Uh, this kind of goes back to semantics, so you can actually put this anywhere you want. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could you could. Uh, I, I think you probably would be able to even put it outside of the HTML tags, and it would probably still work. Um, but the uh, that that's that's questionable though. Basically, the point is that you put it in head just because it's it's for semantics. It's for your own personal organization. When you uh, look at it later and you have like thousands of lines of code, you're not going to be like, um, why is everything like randomly in like whatever place it wants to be right um i think i think it's like a previous analogy i used right like it's like having it's like having an entire book in front of you and then having having like the chapters like in different order or something like that right like even if you have the number of chapters it doesn't make sense right, okay, so this is right. Like the standard yeah it's just a standard so um what we're going to be doing later is we're going to be ad adding a link to a style sheet right so you're not going to be having the styles inside of the html um itself it's going to be in a different page um yeah, so uh, I think somebody else had a question over there. Um, yeah, no, not anymore. Okay, cool. Um, okay, go for it. Okay, uh, header is actually for screen readers and web crawlers. So uh, once again, that's a little bit of a semantic thing. Have you heard of a div? No? Okay. So um, a div is essentially one of the most basic building blocks of HTML elements. And a div is a completely unstyled, um, it's a completely unstyled tag. Like the paragraph tag is uh, styled a certain way. The H1 tag is styled so that the text looks bigger and it's bolder. Right? A div is just one of the most basic building blocks that you see to essentially divide, uh, hence div, um, the page up into different elements. Uh, a header is just a div that is able to be read by web crawlers and screen readers for the blind. Um, yeah, so this is just so that if somebody's on a different assistive device, maybe they could read my message, right? Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be moving on now. Um, and this is where we are going to start styling and actually, you know, make a serious attempt at actually making our page look good. So what we want to do is take everything from step eight underneath the comment and then copy that over into index.html. And after that, uh, let's take out the style tag from createuser.html and then move in the same link href tag. Uh, that way we can link to it directly instead of having the styles in the page. Um, so part of the problem with having the styles in the page are um, when you have a page that looks really good, like the My Messenger clone that we created at the beginning, you're going to have hundreds of lines of styles, right? If you have that mixed in with your HTML, it's just it's just a mess. So that's why we separate these things so that you can read it easier. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so in main.css, which I, get, I I guess I want you to open up <laughs> um, in a different tab, uh, just copy copy the styles that we had previously, and then move it directly into the CSS file. And uh, what that should result in is just a slight color change, but nothing really any different. Um, yeah, so that kind of goes back to the topic of semantics and really making sure you're well organized and everything is well separated. Um, so on to step nine. 
um, we're going to be adding a background image to the home page. So uh, that, that, that really nice looking stock photo you guys saw earlier, um, yeah, we're going to be putting that in right now. So what you want to do is um, in step nine, we add the concept of a div. So take the tag div class <laughs> equals home container. Uh, in my instructions page, it's on line 118. Copy that and go to your index.html file. And then at the very beginning of the body, put that tag in, take everything else in the body, and then tab that forward. Just highlight it and then press the tab button. And then close the div tag like you had earlier. And uh, actually, I think. Uh, Somebody had a question at the beginning, right? Like, why, why do we need to indent, right? Uh, we need to indent now because let's say we didn't indent, right? Like, and we didn't indent any of it. Right? Like, that's pretty much unreadable. Like, it's starting to get a little bit unreadable. So um, that's why you want to indent every time you have, like, a new layer in your website um, or you have children elements. Right? Uh, so that, that way it's just easier for you to read. Uh, so now that we added the home container, uh, the home container div. We're going to add some styles for the home container that actually adds the image. So go back to instructions and in instructions, I think it's line 126, I want you to copy all of the styles from 126 to 136 and put in main.css. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I mean, I, I know I would have questions like at this point, so, um, so uh, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna add some white space here so we can see it better. Okay, so um, just reload the page, index.html. Oh, where is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, so just reload index.html, and you should have the stock photo and all the text in front of it. Um, it looks kind of raw right now. We'll change that, but um, yeah, that should be what you have right now. So for a little summary on the attributes in home container, um, top zero, bottom zero, left zero, right zero, that just tells us where it is on the page, right? So this, this image is going to cover the entire page. So we want it to start drawing at this corner right here, right? So it builds outwards. Um, things usually are built left to right and top down, just like how you read in HTML. So that's usually how you create a giant background. Uh, what's your question? Um, it's responsible for where it fits on the page, right? So let's say I made top 10. What that's going to do, oh, 10 pixels. What that's going to do is move the uh, image. I'm going to actually make it 100 pixels. Uh, it's going to move the image down 100 pixels from the top, right? So that's what it's going to look like. Can you, wait, yeah, hold on. I need to get a charger. Okay, so um, yeah, top, uh, bottom, left, and right are how you position something on a page. And uh, position absolute is something uh, much more complex. Um, positioning is one of the finer arts of CSS and styling. And it basically is how uh, web developers lay things out on pages. So when you have like hundreds of elements on a page, uh, things get really complex. And that's where you use positioning to make sure that things are laid out in the correct order. Um, because you don't always want things to be left or right. Um, like, uh, the guy, like I think somebody was describing earlier, sometimes if you uh, have a form, right, like a Google form, you want it top down, you don't want it left or right, that's what you use positioning for. That's what you use a lot of these things for. Um, finally, uh, we're fitting in the image that we have using all of these background image and background attributes. Right. Yeah, hold on. So on to step 10. Okay, so we're going to be styling the text with Flexbox. We're, we're actually going to be making the form appear top down so that when you fill it in, it's going to actually look like you're signing up on a website, a real website. Um, so uh, in index.html, what I want you to do is add another div, um, which is located at line 147 inside of the div we just created in the last step. 
first Yes, it does. Um, right. So the second div is going to go inside the first div. Um, what I just pasted was this line and then the closing div for this line. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because uh, essentially kind of the way that we style things in a complex web page is that we create containers inside of containers inside of containers, right? Uh, and the reason why we do this is because it's easier for us to group things together when we can separate them um, based on a class, right? So we have this class here for home text container because we want all of the styles inside of this class to be associated with these elements. But let's say we have another div outside here, right? Um, we don't want that to have any kind of styles related to the home text container. We want that to be outside of that text container. Um, Do you want to separate uh, it doesn't have to be a text container, right? So that's just an arbitrary name I gave it, right? It could be, the class name could be like home, home, home furniture container. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to, right? It depends on what you want, right? So let's say you want one div inside another div, then it doesn't need to have its own, right? Or if you, it's, it's all, it's all essentially kind of how you group it, right? Um, have you guys have ever seen a tree diagram? Have you? Maybe? Um, right, so tree diagrams essentially branch from the top and then keep going down. That's kind of how an HTML document is laid out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, that's, uh, okay. Um, that's a good question. Okay, so we... <laughs> We basically use home container as a way to group our elements into a separate section, right? Um, so it's not it's not limited to the background image. Um, yeah, all of the elements currently are inside of home container, right? Uh, yeah, so all of our elements on the page right now are inside of home container, and the reason why we do that is because um, we want to style every single element with the background image that's already there. So the background image has to be behind everything. That's why we put it as the top level element, right? Um, on the other hand, the home text container, if we make any changes in here, we don't necessarily want it to affect anything outside of this div, right? So that's why we have it cascading um, with all the indentation like that. Uh, I don't know if I explained that well. Um, yeah. Um, so just uh, on line 156 of instructions. I just want you to comp, uh, copy everything underneath the comment until line 174. Uh, now's a good time for CSS questions, by the way, because um, uh, CSS is uh, it's a big topic to go into, so I would love to cover more stuff about it if you guys have any questions. About it. Oh yeah, go for it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's ex that's exactly it. Right. So background size cover essentially means it's going to be covering um, the contents of its the contents of its uh, div. Right. So all the contents cover the entire page. So it's going to be covering the entire contents with the image. Right. Um, that's kind of what we're going for. What's up? Yeah. Um, are, are you talking about this tag right here? Yeah. Or this CSS? Yeah. Okay. Uh, both the index and the shape. Oh, that's what you're talking about. And, and with great user, you have a second header called sign up, but the sign up thing doesn't work. Okay. Um, where is it at? Okay. Yeah, that's because um, that's because we're changing the color of everything inside of a header, right? Uh, header is not around the sign up uh, area, so that's why we don't see any change to it.
Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's exactly what you said, right? Uh, have you guys uh, heard of inheritance? Any of you in object oriented programming? Right. Um, so if you've taken CS1331 or maybe even 1301 or even have a background in CS, uh, object oriented programming has something called inheritance, right? Uh, web development doesn't necessarily have anything to do with object oriented programming. It's, it's here and there, right? But the concept of inheritance kind of carries over, right? So if you have an upper level div like this home container, everything inside of this div is gonna ha start out with the same styles as that, as that class has been specified, right? And then if you change it further by adding new classes, that's gonna change the styles further. And you can overwrite things that you previously inherited by putting in a new class, right? Or you can just leave it that way and then all of it carries over. Go for it. Um, okay, um, I didn't quite get that. Can you say that one more time? Like, for the header, you have, like, a yeah. period. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. With the period, Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I should have covered that better. That was my bad. Um, so classes are always going to have a period before them, right? Um, so we specified a class for each of these two divs right here and this button right here, and that's why you see them have a period before it. That's just how we specify a class. A class is one way to group elements in CSS. Um, on the other hand, we can also take the elements tag name alone. Um, I think we used header earlier, right? Uh, I think that's in query user. Right? We used header earlier, right? And header shows up without even having a class. So that affects every header on the page. Um, finally, we also have something called IDs. Uh, you may or may not have heard of that. Um, you'll see it later on, but an ID is basically much more specific than a class. A class can be applied to multiple elements, so you can have a class for several different things on the page, but an ID only shows up once. So you could have an ID like uh, text, right? And then you would only have a single element on the page that has that ID text, and it would only, and all the styles inside of this um, area would only apply to that element. So those are just three different ways to I guess select elements on a page or index um, for HTML and style them however you want to. Um, it's just organizational tactics. Okay, yeah, that's actually an interesting point because a lot of web developers suggest never using ID, uh, IDs at all um, because they think that uh, it essentially makes um, semantics worse and makes it more difficult to use. Um, and there's a lot of controversy around that actually, but I mean, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're thinking like, hey, I'm only gonna have one element on the page, right? And I don't want anyone to be able to use that element again, then you can use ID. Right? Um, it's kind of like a choice thing. Uh, so what step were we on? I think it was step uh, 10. Okay, cool. So I'm assuming we all copied everything over into main.css at this point. Um, so we should have about a 37, 38 line file right now. Uh, what I want you to do is go to uh, the create user link and uh, whew, it's not loading. That's weird. Um, did I put it in the right spot? Oh, oh, okay, okay, my bad. I, I want you to go back to index.html. Right, and now some of this text should be styled. Right, we now have everything centered on the page. Um, I think I'm actually missing some CSS. Let me let me copy it over. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I think I'm missing some CSS. Um. Oh, okay, cool. That's that's where I messed up. Okay, so yeah. Uh, if you guys made the same mistake that I did, I just literally copied everything from uh, the step, but actually um, there was a comment before one of them which doesn't actually apply to this step at all. So what I want you to do is move everything from um, the home container uh, styles here into the home container that we already had 
in the previous step. Um, and then try loading it again. Um, step 10. Um, so we actually only have one dot home container. Um, yeah. Um, but we have, we have a bunch of home text container related classes and, uh, selectors, right? The difference between all of these, uh, pieces of CSS are essentially what they're specifying. So the styles for home text container are going to go to everything that has home text container on it. The styles for home con text container, oh, whoops, uh, 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 yeah, okay. Right, so the styles for this one are going to go straight to home text container for the H1 tag. And if the P tag ever has home context, text container on it, um, the styles are gonna, these styles are going to apply. Um, yeah, any questions? We'll give you guys a minute to... Yo, what's up? Can you make divs rounded? Yeah, you, yeah, you can make dips around it. Um, we're actually going to be doing that later in the presentation. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can get to there. Um, there's a lot more steps, but um, yeah. So right now we have a page with everything centered. Um, the reason they're centered is actually inside of the CSS that we added, and uh, it should be on lines 18 to 20 of your main.css file. Uh, if you guys could pull that up real quick, uh, I would love to go over Flexbox with you. Um, so Flexbox is essentially, um, it's essentially like a new agey kind of way to uh, to uh, style in CSS. So it was introduced with CSS3, which um, makes it pretty new. I think like around 2009, right? And it's actually relatively underused. And basically what that allows you to do is position things without having to deal with the hassle of um, actually like changing the location of every single element on the page. So we can take everything and we can center it by adding the display flex attribute to it. Um, uh, actually, yeah. I think I think uh, next time I'll have somebody. Uh, maybe next week I'll have somebody actually give like a little five-minute presentation on precisely the specifics of Flexbox because Flexbox is very useful in a CSS context. So if you guys get the time, please look it up on your own too. Um, uh, but uh, it's pretty complex too. I'm not going to go over the specifics of that right now. Uh, but basically, that's what allows us to center everything on the page like we just did. Um, if you want more information on how to center things, uh, it's actually in the step itself. There's a um, resources section right at the beginning that says um, more about Flexbox. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so in step 11, we're talking about positioning again. Um, so... Uh, Right, okay, so what we're adding here is a shader. Um, if you go back to the website, uh, it, I don't know, it, to, to me, me like, like it seems, seems kind of like, like it's a little bit hard to read. Right? <coughs> um, so part of the reason for that is that, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit too bright in the background. Right? We, can, we can turn it down a little bit. So what I want you guys to do is take uh, line 182 from instructions and then move that into index.html at the very bottom of the body and then I want you to go back to instructions and copy all the CSS under that into main.css um, so what we're doing here is we're literally just uh, making the background a little bit duller um, and uh, what, what we want to do is just make the text stand out a little bit more um, yeah. Anybody notice any problems with this right now? No. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um. Yeah. So the entire thing is shaded, right? And that's that's really not something we want because uh, the reason why we have the shader is to make it so that we can actually read better. So, um, what I'm what I want you guys to do is move on to step twelve. And then step 12, um, we're going to be copying all the CSS over from underneath the CSS section, right? Putting that into main.css. Uh, I just clicked out. And uh, trying it one more time. 
So what we introduced in step 12 is something called Z index. Um, Z index is a CSS attribute that uh, allows you to create depth on a page. Right? So anything that has a higher Z index value is going to show up in the foreground. Anything that has a lower Z index value is going to show up behind that. Um, that's why we put the Z index for one uh, in the home text container. That way it shows up in front of the shader and doesn't get blotted out like the rest of the page. Yeah. Any questions? Um, I, yeah, integers. Yeah. Yeah, but actually you can also use negative numbers for uh, Z index. I wouldn't, I mean, for you, so for your sake, all you need to know is Z index is, imagine like an entire number, like an entire number line. You can select any numbers you want. You just are going to choose any numbers to put things behind other things, right? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you could, I could even have a Z index of five actually, and it would still work the same. Um, it doesn't really matter. So uh, on to step thirteen, um, our font right now it, it has like a bunch of serifs and it looks kind of ugly, right? We want to make it a little bit more uh, web web designy, right? Make it look prettier, you know, maybe like Apple or something like that. You know, shameless plug. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy everything under step thirteen and then move that into our main.css file. Um, if anyone has any questions about the CSS, by the way, um, let me know. I know I'm going through it really fast. It's, uh, it's because we actually have a lot of steps here. Um, uh, we should be done in about 30 minutes if we go about this pace, though. Um, all right, so what we're doing right now is we're importing a font file, or like, uh, like a set of fonts from Google Fonts, right? Google Fonts is a great tool if you ever want to use fonts outside of Arial and, like, and, like, Courier New, right? Um, Right, so what we're pulling here is Roboto, which is a pretty popular web font, and uh, we're putting it into the body so that the entire body will have Roboto applied to it, because we don't want to switch fonts throughout the page. We want to stick to a single font. Um, and then we're also making the H1 thinner because uh, having bolded text is really not a thing anymore. Um, so I'm going to reload that, and then now we have like a great looking font. Um, Anyone, anyone uh, need me to cover anything else on that? Uh, everyone up to speed? Cool. Okay. Yo, what's up? Um, that's precisely what we did here. I can make it more bold if you want. Um, so usually you can go anywhere from 100 to 900. 100 <laughs> is the thinnest, 900 is the thickest. And... Uh, uh, yeah, based on your browser, it's going to show different results. Um, <coughs> whoops. But yeah, it's basically just a thickness rating. Yep. yep. What's up? Uh, it actually doesn't matter. I didn't move it up. Uh, no normally, I would move it up to the top of the file just for the sake of uh, keeping it clean. I didn't move it up because uh, I just wanted to keep it a little bit faster. But yeah, normally, I would recommend putting your imports at the top just, just that way you have it organized in a you know, a comfortable way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So there's no closing tag here. Um, right. So actually, um, most of the time, the way your browser works is that it tries to intelligently understand your page as much as possible. So even if you mess up a little bit, usually it'll figure something out and try to display something. But uh, let's say let's say um, I didn't have a closing tag there, and then I had some content underneath it, right? Um, then what's going to happen is they're automatically going to become children of that content. So the the main reason we have the closing tag is to make sure that we're keeping ourselves in check, right? Um, and it's also just you know more web safe. But usually your browser will interpret it in a more intelligent way than um, just like throwing it on there. That's why it figured it out. Um, I think somebody else had their hand up over there. Um, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, it does go by hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. And there was somebody back there, too. Um, so better, like, better, better is really up to, 
whatever your own preferences are, but personally I think better is always font weight just because you don't really have much control over what an H1, an H2, and H3 is. At the end of the day, um, those are like rigid measurements that are provided by the HTML specification. So I usually just stick to using P tags and font weight everywhere, right? P tags or div tags. Right? Yeah, what's up? No, it's actually um, pretty different. It's much more similar to commenting in other languages. Um, so you can't do forward slash comments like that. But what you can do is a forward slash, a star, type, star, and then a closing slash. Right? Um, that's how you normally comment. Um, the thing about commenting is I always, always recommend commenting uh, in CSS especially because um, if you have a lot of styles, like in this one element right here, uh, what I liked to do when I first started web developing was that I would separate the different parts of my styles, right? So I would have like positioning in a certain location, and then I'd have like um, like a background in a certain location, right? Uh, and by having comments, I was able to read it again when I looked at it later on and understand my code. Um, so commenting is especially helpful when you're first starting out with CSS because there's so many new attributes and so many new things. I, would, I highly recommend it every time. Yeah, what's up? Actually, that's um, that's a great question that talks about something that I skipped over for the sake of brevity. Um, but um, there's something known as positioning and uh, positioning absolute, right? So if you take a good look at the CSS file, um, we have position absolute in the shader, and we also have it in the home container, right? So position absolute essentially makes your elements unaffected by other elements and unable to affect other elements. So if you have position absolute on a single element, it could be on top of another element. It could be anywhere. It's just not going to be uh, positioned relative to any elements on the page. It's just going to be positioned to the page itself. right? Um, that's a little bit complex to understand, um, but uh, positioning is something that you just have to get a use for. right? And it comes in handy in situations like this where you want to have two things on top of each other without having z-index or without having something else right there. Um, actually, no, z-index would uh, come in handy for other reasons. That's what it should be, but anyway, um, positioning is what you do to have things on top of each other. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think uh, we're on step 14, right? Okay, so now we're going to be creating an animated button. So animations are, um, believe it or not, even though they're interactive, uh, you don't need JavaScript to make them interactive. You can do them all in CSS. Um, so in step 14, if you take everything from line 230 down to line 247, and then copy that into the main.css file. Um, we've basically added all the styles to have the button that we had for the sign up, um, the sign up element uh, styled so that it actually looks like it did on the complete page. Right? So, um, yeah, I'm going to give you guys a minute to get to this part. But, uh, yeah. Or maybe like 10 seconds. <laughs> What's up? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, you're, okay, so you're talking about with, okay, so that would be an attribute. Right? Okay, attribute. Yeah. Um, right, can you tell me what line you're on? You know? Okay. Oh, instructions is line two, three, eight, okay, cool. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, for the button, okay. Oh, okay, I can see how that would be confusing, okay. So, so width 100% right now is relative to the width of the home text container, right? So the home text container doesn't take up that much space. It takes up as much space as the biggest piece of text here, right? Welcome to my message, right? So that's why width 100% covers exactly that amount of space. But now if the button wasn't underneath the home text container and it was outside under the home <coughs> container, it would take up the entire location of the page, right? So width... Um, Unless you position it uh, as absolute instead of relative, then um, 
actually, uh, I, I think that's it, right? If you position it as absolute, it will probably show up relative to the size of the page, not not to the size of the div it's in. Um, yeah, go for it. For Boxer? Um, you mean in button and button hover? Like, okay, that's uh, that, that goes to something I did want to discuss. Um, okay, so um, we have the class button on the link, right? Um, and that's kind of how we get all the colors and everything uh, and also make it look kind of pretty, right? Uh, but one new thing that we introduce is when you hover over it, it animates, right? So the reason why we have box shadow showing up twice is because we have a class selector for button, and then we also have a class and then something that's known as a pseudo selector in CSS, right, for when you're actually hovering over it, right? So pseudo selectors are useful in CSS to represent when, you know, there's change or there's something else happening to an element on the page. So uh, I would recommend that you look on, uh, I, think, I think the instructions actually has a link, right? Okay. Um, and so I would recommend you look at some of these links, right? Uh, not the box shadow one, but the transition one, and also Google pseudo selector CSS to find out more. Um, and that, that's where you'll find out more about pseudo selectors like hover and other things that allow you to change an element based on how it's being interacted with on the page. Uh, the reason why we have box shadow twice is because at the beginning we don't even have a box shadow, or if we have one, it's very small. And then when we hover over it, um, it increases and gets darker. Right? Um, so that's part of what we have with the button animation when we hover over it. Yeah, what's up? Um, point five. Oh, are you talking about this? Yeah. Okay. 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 That's that's a good question. So transitions are essentially how we um, modulate the animations that we have in CSS. So when you have when you have a button, you have all the styles that you see right here before I hover on. It, right? uh, it's everything in this area. But then when I hover on it, um, the browser starts looking at this area to find out more about how it wants to change the element. And then it uses the transition attribute to decide how it's gonna change it. So uh, these keywords, like all, all essentially means that everything um, everything inside of this, this, uh, right, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 like all the attributes, right? Is, is that what I'm, is, is, is that accurate? Right, right, every attribute that's been changed so background color and box shadow will be changed in the actual element, and they'll be changed in under, um, not under, exactly five seconds. And ease basically describes the smoothness of like the rate of transition, right? So it doesn't have to be ease. I think there's other things like, um, huh? Right, right. Well, let me let me try it out actually. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For mod. Mm -hmm. Class equals button in multiple. Oh yeah, you can. So classes are things that you can use in multiple elements. Um, that's just a rule of thumb. Classes can be used in multiple elements and multiple different kinds of elements too. So you could have the same class for a paragraph tag and the same class for a div tag. Um, but uh, IDs are unique. You should only use it once on a page. Yeah. What's up? Box shadow. Okay, so box shadow. Um, okay, all right. So. Mm. Yeah. All right. So the reason why we have all of these different uh, values over here is because box shadow is an attribute that contains multiple smaller attributes inside of it, right? So uh, you could have, uh, for example, you could have another attribute that's less specific than box shadow, such as box shadow bottom, right? Uh, oh, I guess you can't. Um, but um, oh, box shadow is just box. But, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I mean, yeah, like there's just there's just like a bunch of different things that are inside of Box Shadow that you need to know. I mean, just play around with it essentially. CSS is mostly playing around with it. Yeah. What's up, Dave? Did you, did you uh, we created the button class. So you can have an input type for button, but then, yeah, having an input type is different from having a class, right? So you could have type equals button and have class equals button, and they're referring to two completely different things. Okay, so if yeah. you, I think you just asked that, but if you have multiple buttons, how do you differentiate how to type? Uh, you could have different classes. So you could have class button one, class button green. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. So, um... I'm going to move on to step 15 now. Uh, so I want you guys to look at line 254 of the instructions on step 15. In step 15, we're going to be covering something known as the box model. It's really important, um, and it talks. The box model is essentially like all about how a HTML page is laid out, right? Um, so I want you to take everything from line 254. Whoops, I clicked it down. 254 to um, yeah, actually, just 254 and 255, and then in createuser.html, um, put that right under, oh, right around the form. Yeah, okay, so put that around the form, tab the form out a little bit, and then have a closing div around it. So in this step, we're going to be adding some uh, special uh, markup language to um, actually change our form around a little bit. Um, oh, whoops. So in the form tag, I want you guys to type in something uh, known as method. Uh, and then inside of two double quote strings, I want you to put all caps get. And finally, another attribute called action. And then have that pointing to message.html. So all that's doing is telling us in our form uh, what to pull up once we click submit. Right? Um, it's going to be getting message.html. Um, yeah. Okay, so finally, uh, for the rest of the step, just copy all the CSS we need and then move it over to the CSS file. Uh, it's a decent amount of CSS. Uh, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a big change. Sweet. Oh, oops. Don't need that anymore. Wait, so uh, just open up create user that HTML in your browser. Now you should have a form that actually looks like a form. Um, the only things that we're missing right now kind of are um, actual layout on the actual form. Uh, but everything else on the page is just uh, fine and dandy. Um, anyway, uh, right, so this is basically just uh, more CSS we added in here. We've discussed a lot of the CSS already. Um, it's really not much different from before. Uh, I want you guys to open up the developer console um, on this page. Yeah. So something I'm going to introduce to you right now, uh, it's going to come, uh, it's going to come in handy a lot of times when you're web developing and you're not entirely sure why things are showing up the way they are, um, or why things are out of order. It's something called uh, the bot. Well, actually, not why things are out of order, but why things look kind of funky on the page, right? It's something might have a little bit too much white space next to it. It might be um, a little bit too wide, um, and it's it's something that we can solve when we look at the box model, right? So the box model is uh, just a little bit, uh, it's just a little widget in most consoles uh, that allow you to analyze the different margins, padding, and content inside of divs and other tags on the page. So if we inspect the sign up, the sign up form, uh, we have the margin, which is, um, which is, yeah, a decent number of pixels on each side and then 20 pixels on top, um, and then it has a border, but uh, you can't see it. That's why it doesn't show up. And then you can also see the padding and then the actual content inside of the box. So the box model comes in handy because 
uh, sometimes we might, might want the margins to be smaller. If we have other content on the side and we want it to show up on the same page, we might, we might want, want the margins to be 60 instead of 120. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind when you guys are developing uh, because oftentimes you're going to come across a situation where you're like, why is something not showing up on the page? And it might just be that the margin for something else is too big and it's pushing something off. Um, so just use that whenever you need to. Uh, so that's essentially what the box model is all about. Um, it shows up in your console, so you can just open it up at any time. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Cool. Um, so in step 16, uh, we're going to be taking out some default CSS that already comes with a um, with the browser style sheet, uh, so that's going into actually uh, um, more of browser defaults, right? So one thing you have to know is that all browsers have some defaults to them. Um, I think Google Chrome has a margin of ten attached to it. That's why you have this little white space here on the page, right? Um, that's because there's a margin already there inside of the browser style sheet. So we want to take all the code from step 16 and then put that into our CSS file. Um, and once you do, reload the page and then all the margins that you saw before should be gone because we didn't code them in, that was just what the browser had. Um, of course, if you want to keep it, you can keep it in your projects, but generally it's helpful for you to be able to change the margins on your own without having to worry about defaults. And I don't think margin's the only thing that's affected. I think padding might be affected, but uh, it's up to you to find out um, what styles are actually actually affected. And um, the default style sheets for browsers are located at the resource that we provided in the instructions. So, yeah. So on to step 17. Um, now we're going to be selecting elements uh, by attributes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, sorry, I, I, I confuse myself with these instructions. Like, they're really dense, right? Um, there's a lot to go through here. But, um, yeah, so basically, we're going to be taking out some of the CSS we had before. Uh, actually, no, we're not going to be taking out anything. We're going to be adding new CSS that's going to allow us to uh, specify exactly what we want to style um, without giving everything a unique ID or giving it, like, a class. Right. So in the sign-up form, if you remember looking at this thing, right, we have username, password, and confirm password. Right. We're going to want those things styled a certain way. So another way you can specify things in CSS is by a pseudo selector that allows you to select the input and its type, and select things by attribute. Right. So if you ever have a uh, if you ever have a selector in CSS. You can select it even further by uh, specifying what attributes are inside of that uh, inside of that element. So, in our signup form, if you have a piece of input input and it's of type text or type password, it's going to be affected by this CSS. Um, and so keep in mind that CSS is a really tricky thing to master. So oftentimes you're going to find yourself just going to resource online just to look at it again. So just copy everything over from that and paste it into your main.css, reload, and it should be styled, looking pretty beautiful, um, actually working. Okay. Any questions? Um, okay, so on to the next one. Um, now we're going to introduce form navigation. Uh, so, so far we, oh. What's up? Uh, say it again. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Oh, okay. Okay, so border radius. Okay, so border radius is a fun thing to play around with. This is actually how you make divs rounded. Um, so border radius takes uh, the actual outside of the element that we're looking at, and then it allows you to curve it. Right? So if you have a border radius of ten, like we do right here. Um, Right here, like uh, this part of the page, uh, let me let me see if I can, right. So this, these parts of the page right here, right, they're curved inwards by a radius of 10 pixels. That's why we had a border radius of 10 pixels. Um, I, uh, I'm not sure what you were comparing it to again, but uh, yeah, border radius is different. Oh, right, right. Border radius is different from padding because padding is actually on the inside of the div, and that's what separates the content inside the div from the outside of it. 
So now we're going to go back to form navigation. Um, so we already added the method get and the action to move to a new page to our form. Uh, we just want to create this new page message.html so the form actually takes us to the messenger clone. Um, this is where we're starting to get to the end of the presentation and where you're going to start to see a messenger clone actually developing before your own eyes. So uh, I want you to open up the new file message.html and paste everything that uh, is underneath the comment on uh, line 323 inside of it. When you're done, you should have a completely blank page with nothing in it. Yeah, so what we basically accomplished here is when you go to create user that HTML, uh, when you go to create user that HTML, if you click submit, it'll take you to message that HTML. Uh, that's what we added with the form method equals get and the action equals message that HTML section that we put in a couple steps ago. Um, yeah. Okay, so on to step 19. Uh, we're going to be talking about Flexbox a little bit more. Um, Flexbox is just, just so helpful. I uh, strongly recommend just taking some time into finding a good Flexbox tutorial. I think there's a website called flexboxfroggy.com. Um, just Google that um, later on if you want to look up Flexbox a little bit more. But basically, it'll give you a good introduction to Flexbox. Um, it's just so helpful. Anyway, so just copy everything from... In step 19, from line 341 down to 356 into your message.html into the body. I don't even think, I don't think we need to copy the header again. You can take that out. Uh, reload that. Oh, geez. What happened there? All right. We don't have any CSS yet. That's why you don't see anything. Right. So, uh... Yeah, take everything from the CSS there, too. And copy that into main.css. Right, okay. So uh, right now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we use one file. But actually, um, like by all means, please organize everything you do in web development because sometimes you're going to come across things that are like hundreds, thousands of files large, like especially like like a real website, right? Um, and so basically you probably want to style, you, you want to keep your styles organized to like whatever grouping style is best for you. So if you like to uh, separate things based on page, uh, then you could have index.html correspond to main.css and then have message.html correspond to message.css. Uh, however you really want it, but basically just stay organized as much as you can. Um, it's for your own purposes and for anybody's purposes if they're reading your code. Yeah, We wouldn't actually be doing this in production environment, so no. Yeah. Uh, right, so I would say that would actually depend on entirely on how you're developing it. So let's say you use, um, let's say you use certain frameworks, right? So one popular framework is Angular 1.5, right? So you might have a style sheet that's uh, related to a single controller, right? Uh, if you don't know what Angular 1.5 controllers are, that's okay. But basically, you, you might have style sheets organized based on whatever is the best way to organize it at the time, kind of. Right? Um, that's going to change on what technology you're using and how you're writing your website. Um, if you're writing just a plain text, like HTML and CSS website, straight from scratch, um, oftentimes it's nice to keep it segregated based on page. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so if we reload the page, uh, we have like this nice little Brazilian thing here. Um, yeah, so all we did was essentially we used Flexbox to separate sep uh, separate divs on the page uh, so that we can create different sections for our Messenger clone in the future. So our Messenger clone in the future is going to have users on the blue part and it's going to have messages on the yellow part and uh, it's going to have type, like a typing area on the green part. Um, so this whole section is actually dedicated to uh, positioning alone. Um, Flexbox is a huge topic. Uh, it's going to take me a long time to go into it. Uh, I really recommend you guys look, on it, look at it on your own, so I'm just going to uh, speed along through the next step. And uh, 
move on to converting everything to semantics, right? So in step 20 on line 397 of the instructions, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to stop naming everything divs because using divs for everything is actually not the best practice in the future um, just because you're going to have like a million divs and you're going to start getting confused. Um, we're going to change the user pane, which we haven't developed yet, but it's the blue section on this page. Uh, we're going to change the user pane to an unordered list, which is UL. Um, so, and then we're going to change other things on the page too. So I just recommend copying everything in message that, yeah, in from line 400 down to line 417, and then replacing the body on message.html with that. Yeah, just like this. Um, so what we accomplished here essentially was um, we got rid of the div tags, and then we replaced it with tags that actually semantically make sense. So in a user pane, like in Facebook, when you have like users, right, you tend to have them in lists. So we use something called an unordered list, which is specified by the UL tag. And uh, further, we also have a new form for the actual typing area. So the typing area isn't just a div because it's accepting input. Um, that's really all we did. And if you see and reload the page, you'll notice that uh, I don't know what the hell happened. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why everything's red. But anyway, um, yeah, if you, if you take a look at the page, nothing should have changed. Oh, 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 cool. Okay, so I, I just looked, I just looked over that. Um, yeah, so in the user pane and the messages and everything, um, you want to add margin zero to um, the elements we just added. Yeah, I'll just add it to everything. That's kind of what we're looking for. I think I might have added it to too many things. That's okay. Um, it probably shouldn't affect it because um, we're just resetting the margin a little bit. Um, um, yeah, you want to add margin zero to all of the inside elements. That way it doesn't show up with the weird red stuff that I had. Um, that was a good point you pointed out. Um, but yeah, that wasn't because of the, the default styling. That was actually just because um, uh, we took out uh, yeah, oh, actually that was because of the default styling. Yeah, um, because we got rid of the divs and then we put in the semantic elements. Right? Um, all right, so if we go to the next step, instructions, um, all we're essentially doing is uh, copying the form in. Um, that's the form that allows you to type into the Messenger clone. Uh, so if you go to uh, message.html and replace the form with what we actually have, um, we should have a typing area that you can actually type into with the submit button too. Uh, yeah, so just copy over the CSS too. Whoops, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, for sure. Go for it, go for it. Okay, yeah, this is a good time actually. Okay, yeah. cool, all right, we're going to Finished up for everyone who wants to. We've got like a few more steps left for everyone. Actually, I think we only have one more step. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, one, one or two. Or well, whatever. Anyway, we keep going. Have, have the All right. Yeah. Going to finish this up for yeah. everyone, but right now I just want to be sure that everyone remembers that we have a Wednesday meeting. So tomorrow, that is catered by uh, Twisted Taco. It's going to be over. Um, over APIs. So uh, if you ever want to do a hackathon project with APIs, definitely something very useful. That is the College of Computing number uh, 340. Come there, get some food, learn about APIs. Good friend you is going to be talking about that. Um, and then also, uh, a bit of a preview for next week. Uh, next week, we're going to be going over JavaScript in this uh, class. So we're actually going to start making things interactive. But we're not going to be focusing on the web page for JavaScript. JavaScript is a nuanced language. There's a few things in between. So we're going to be focusing on making sure that you become an expert in JavaScript um, and all of the little nuances with it. Something definitely very useful for the beginning.
beginning of beginner web developers. Also next week on Wednesday, Microsoft will be coming. So um, to do a to present Azure, which is their cloud hosting platform. So definitely look forward to that. And then with that, I return you to our regularly scheduled entertainment. And Microsoft is totally looking for web developers, so like please please bring your resume. Like that's that's important. Like if there's Google uh debate time, you can just <laughs> Yeah. Um because we're sponsoring it. So yeah. Um yeah. And they'll bring food. Um okay. So I may have missed some CSS here. I don't I don't really know. Uh that doesn't really matter too much because we're just trying to get the point in, right? Um so now we want to implement a list, right? Um, a list is an interesting uh, element that we have in HTML that uh, it, it really comes in handy when you have things that you dynamically create too. Like in the future when you're making your HTML, you're not going to be writing every single thing down, right? Like you're not going to be writing down that you have a certain user. You're going to be creating it dynamically, right? Uh, you oftentimes find lists being used in dynamic situations. Uh, we're not going to be doing that right now. We're just going to be creating a list of users uh, by hard coding it. So if you copy everything from lines 507 to 511 instructions and then put that into the list for user pane on line 12 and message.html. And finally take all of the CSS underneath that. Um, you should have a bunch of pictures of the GT Web Dev officers and former graduated officers too. Oh, actually, no, we don't have that here. Never mind. That's in the next step. But um yeah, we have a bunch of stylings to have these users in there now. Great. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, the HTML page? Yeah, sure. Um, that's actually inside of the class user, right? So if we go to main.css, uh, where's the class user? I, I think it should be somewhere in here, right? But yeah, basically, uh, all that is related to the classes, right? All the styles are always going to be in the style sheet. Um, Dave? Are you talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, what was your question? Sorry. Oh, just put it. Just put it inside of the. Oh shoot, it shouldn't be index.html, my bad. This is supposed to be message.html. Um, that was just a little typo, don't worry about that. Um, just put it inside of the typing area. Um, yeah, index.html is not gonna change for the rest of this, so yeah. yeah. This should be message.html. Um, yeah, just a little announcement. Uh, on line 437, index.html should be at message.html in the instructions. Um, yeah, so just put it inside of the form. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Right. <coughs> yep. So, on to step 23. Uh, now we're going to be adding images for our users, right? Um, so, inside of each of the list elements, uh, we're going to be adding an image tag that has their images um, as, saved, as saved files inside of the folders that we uh, have already created for you. Um, so just copy everything because I don't want you guys to have to type out all of the image tags. Just copy everything from here. Right? Um, image tags are pretty straightforward. They just put images in certain locations wherever you specify them. Um, and then just put that in message.html wherever the list items were already. Uh, save it. Reload it. Um, okay, so we didn't add the CSS. That's why like everything looks wacky right now. Um, go back to the instructions. And take all the CSS, copy it over to main.css. Um, basically, all it's doing is adding a border radius of 50. This was, um, I think there was a guy who was talking about um, how to make uh, rounded divs, right? All you have to do is add a border radius of 50 because then it makes 50% of, it makes 50% of the length or the width uh, change into a curve. Right. So if you reload it now. It should look just like a user list on a messenger clone. 
And finally, um, going to step 24 to start to finish things off. I think Actually, I think this might be the last step. Um, uh, we're going to be adding in all the messages that you saw in the initial clone, in the complete version. Um, and uh, normally, you wouldn't be hard coding in these messages. The only reason we're doing that is to like prove that it's a prototype, right? Um, like, so actually, this could come in handy at hackathons, right? If you don't actually want to build something <laughs> that you need to build for the hackathon, right? You could just like hard code it just like here, right? Um, and then to say, hey, you know, I have like a working application. I would not recommend that. I'm not endorsing that, but I'm just saying like you could do that, right? Um, so just copy paste everything from there and then all the CSS under that. I think it's a lot of CSS. Um, take it and put it in our main.css file. Uh, boom. Um, uh, the first person message and sef second person message. The reason why we have two different classes is because usually like in a messenger clone, you have like blue and green or blue and white or something like that, right? Yeah, what's up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, that's partially because of semantics, right? I think we discussed semantics earlier, right? Uh, making it easier to understand for your own readability and also for the sake of web crawlers, right? Like, like web crawlers are going to know something's a list, right? Or a screen reader for the blind is going to know something is a list. Uh, but not only that, um, lists have default CSS, right? So... Uh, part of the default CSS for a list is actually a bullet point, and I, um, yeah, yeah. In this tutorial, I didn't show you guys the bullet point because I overwrote the CSS. But normally, uh, lists are always top down, and then they have bullets. Right? Um, it's kind of just a way for you to organize it better. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, did I do that? Okay, I might have done that wrong. Or actually, yeah, it's on, it's inside of the. Okay, 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 okay. Um, right. So the unordered list is just what declares that a list is starting, and then each of the list elements um, should only be located inside of an unordered list. Or in actually, you can also have an ordered list, but yeah, it should be located inside of a list. Oh, okay. Um, that's partially for organization. And that's also partially, partially um, because the unordered list has styling of its own, right? Um, so a list, an unordered list has styling so that all of the elements inside of it has bullet points. And it also has styling so that it only takes up the space of the contents inside of it. So, um, right. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, that is kind of up to the developer. Right? I didn't actually write this tutorial, but the reason why I would perceive you would do this is because um, normally what I like to do is I like to have everything containerized inside of a div in my web pages um, because divs are kind of like the building blocks. You know, uh, divs don't have any pre-built styling; they just they just have um, they just have like an expected way of working. So if you have a div containing um, all your elements. Uh, it's easier to uh, okay. It's, it's it's hard for me to explain this, but it's just it's just um it's just a nice way to containerize elements, right? Containerizing becomes really important in the future because if you have like a hundred million things, it's nice to be able to separate them into containers. Right? All right, guys, um, a quick, yeah. quick uh, thing. Yeah. If you're a beginner and really want some introduction to great CSS frameworks, I allow you to really rock a few things with me. I recommend you stay for just three more minutes. I'll just give you some references to very popular frameworks. So uh, just by show of hands, who wants to see some of the frameworks? Just a quick understanding. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, it'll be a four, three to four minutes, and then you'll have some good references. So I'll let Sasha go. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Uh, you barely even have to let me finish up because I think we're finished now. Um, so that was basically the entire messenger clone. Um, if you go through the whole thing, it shouldn't look yellow. That's just that's just me. Um. But if you go through the whole thing, you know, it's going to be working. Uh, none of the interactivity parts are going to be working. Like if you type in a message, it's not going to work. But basically now you can, like, you can tell your moms and dads, and like, hey, you know, I, I, I can make this thing. I can literally like, like make anything I want now. So, um, yeah, uh, that was a quick introduction. Not quick. That was a really long introduction. I, I'm exhausted right now. That was a really long introduction to HTML, CSS. Um, uh, I would love to highlight please look up Flexbox on your own. Like, please look up Flexbox. Flexbox is awesome. Um, 
Yeah. Any other questions related to this whole messenger clone or any of the presentation I gave? Um, okay, cool. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Like, I'm really surprised, like, even more than, like, two people stuck around. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, that was my spiel. Yeah. Keep my laptop. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So he's going to show you some frameworks, like he said before. Yeah. Um, yeah, frameworks are so useful because, like, you saw all the CSS we put in, right? You don't want to have to do that unless you're learning CSS as like, as like your own hobby, right? If you want to fire up something fast, you're going to want a framework, and that's what he's introducing you to now. So. All right. This is going to be a very brief talk, just to give you an introduction to how to use CSS frameworks. So, uh, yeah. So if you go to this link, you'll find a presentation with the links that I'm about to show you. Uh, this should work. Uh, okay, I'm going to try the link. Okay, it works. It's good. Um, okay. So CSS frameworks. Um, so frameworks in general are just a set of concepts and an agreed upon set of best practices. It's a, a common way to approach uh, a type of a problem. So in your in our Java and Python classes, we've seen, um, for example, in Java, there's some Java web frameworks that are just a series of best practices and a series of um, useful classes that um, do some work for web development. Um, in terms of Java in particular, you can think of say, um, you can think of its um, collections framework as a framework. It's just a, a set of best practices that people use to, to um, use common data structures. So just like that, there are some frameworks for CSS. If you check out this links, there's a, there's, a, there's a list of 20 common CSS frameworks. The goal of uh, CSS frameworks in particular is to solve a uh, common type of problem so developers don't have to repeat their code and uh, don't have to re research more advanced topics like Flexbox, but you should research that because that's really cool. Um, so in general, these are, these are just an outline of the types of frameworks. There are frameworks for every level of web development from the very front that we talked about today to the very back where you're talking with databases. This just makes it really easy to do some of the very common stuff, say like connecting to a database. You don't want to write like SQL connection open or all that stuff. Or in our, in our, our front end language, we don't want to write um, um, the code for like creating these round messages where a framework for chat messaging application might have that already. Um, the main most important components of CSS frameworks are grid systems, meaning a way to align a way to align um, elements in a web page. Typography, which is very important and very um, thought about when you're developing web pages. And also cross, and also it's a good support for cross um, browser rendering of some elements. So each browser has a different rendering engine and then a different way of interpreting the HTML that we wrote. So if you use a CSS framework, these people have researched exactly how to write code such that Firefox, IE, like IE8, which is horrible, and Chrome all can have the same user exp experience for the user. These are the five common frameworks I wanted to show you. Skeleton CSS is the most bare bones, hence skeleton. So it's the most bare bones CSS framework. There's just, it's 400 lines of code, and when you minify, it's even smaller. So it's very compact. If you have a very light application for hackathon or something, that's something you can look at and get a good start with. Foundation CSS is another one that's comparable to Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the most commonly used CSS framework on the web. Uh, it's very easy to use, and that's what I'll go into. Materialized CSS is kind of similar to Bootstrap in structuring, but it's more uh, designed to that material feel that you see in Android apps or Google's products. Angular Material is a very complicated framework. Like, extremely, it's like annoyingly complicated. It ties in. It, it, it's very interwoven with JavaScript, which we haven't covered yet. But if you're ambitious, which you should be, you should check that out um, after our, say, JavaScript talk. So I'm just going to go go to Bootstrap and just show you how you can use um, uh, Bootstrap. So we can. So this website itself, the one we're seeing, is written in Bootstrap. So it's a very easy uh, set of processes, um, set of steps. So all you have to do is copy and paste. 
this. Uh, what, what other stuff? You have to copy and paste these three links into that, that head tag that Sai showed you. And then once you do that, you get access to Bootstrap's um, CSS. So I'm going to do that really. I'm going to do that really quickly. I think I've spoken for about four minutes now. Um, I'm going to create a new file. Um, so I'm just copying. I'm just pasting in all the those links I showed you, and then just end the head, and then body, end body. And you don't really need to end HTML, but why not? Um, let's see. Um, so this is Bootstrap. Okay. So where is this? All right, one second. Max are weird. Um, so BS HTML. So this is the page that I just edited. We can look at the source, which is exactly what we see, just those three links. So now I'll just copy some common um, elements to show you how it works. Um, let's look at let's look at components. So in Bootstrap, there's something called CSS and there's something called components. Components are basically something that Bootstrap has invented that is um, very useful to you. CSS is basically a way of styling existing components. So you saw the form submit button. In the CSS tab up there, you'll see exactly how to style those types of buttons to make it look good. Com so let's look at some of the components. Bootstrap has a bunch of fonts here, but I don't think they really work right now, so I'll just skip that. Um, so you can see, if you want, in some, this mouse is really bad. Oh, okay, thank you. We got an expert here. Okay, so you see this, this, these little cool tabs here? Sometimes those are used in text editors to like align text. So if you want that type of use, uh, we can just copy and paste that into, I know English, okay. Um, we can just copy and, oh my goodness. We can just copy and paste that into our HTML file and then render it. And then we get that button. Really easy. Just um, three lines of the import, importing libraries and this button. Um, this, I'll show you uh, two more elements. The, the second most common element is, um, let's see. Um, they're nav bars. Oh my goodness. OK, so nav bars. So you, this type of nav bar is very common on websites. You have a brand. You know, where you put the logo of your company, you have links to various pages, and then a drop down where you can see more things, and then like search buttons, etc. So, oh my goodness. So in, in this in this in Bootstrap, all you have to do is basically just have to copy and paste. And boots and the CSS libraries behind Bootstrap will take care of all the all the hard work for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that looks similar. There's some alignment issues, but uh, you can look at the getbootstrap.com page and see for yourself how to fix that. But here you can see that it looks exactly like what we saw before. So let me just show you quickly what this looks like in terms of um, um, what we'll see what Bootstrap is really all about. Um, so I selected a div here. A, the, this div is containing the entire nav bar. If you look down here, we see that, um, let's see, here it is. We can see some, some bootstrap code. So you see here, bootstrap.css line 6473. These, these are some rules that are applied to the, 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 this div in particular. So basically, the same code that Sai wrote in main.css, bootstrap is written in a very comprehensive way for um, an entire scope of web applications. So I'll just show you some of the more common um, tags here. Something cool are badges. So if you have a chat application, you can put badges really easy just by copying in that code. Um, Jumbotron, so just like the splash page for our chat application, we can have something like Jumbotron. And as you can see, it's just four, five lines of code, no CSS. So if you're afraid of CSS right now, this is a great way to get into it. There's a lot more great stuff in uh, Bootstrap. 
Though something I really like is their color coding. So if you just copy in this, you get that green um, alert message. And so, so Bootstrap is basically like a scaffolding framework. So if you're really pressed on time in a hackathon, or you just want to um, not deal with all the intricacies of scaling web pages, uh, scaling web pages for different um, um, different clients, this is a great way to go. Uh, the last thing I want to cover is, so you can see there's a lot of stuff. Um, last thing would be, oh my goodness. Um, the grid system, let's see. You can go, you can go into more detail here, but basically you can have divs like down here, you can see um, the different divs you can have. So basically on a page you can have rows of content and within that columns, and you can align those columns to look differently on different browsers. So there's something we didn't cover today in CSS called media, media queries, which allows you to scale your web page for different, for different platforms, uh, different like screen sizes, and Bootstrap really simplifies that process. So if you're interested in this and really fast web development, that doesn't involve too much CSS, so you can really get to the heart of your application. You should check out Bootstrap, uh, getbootstrap.com, or the presentation PDF that was up here. And you'll, you can just walk through the code, copy, paste, and code, and really understand what's happening. Um, yeah, any questions about how this works, um, sample applications, things like that? Yeah. Um, we'll probably... We'll post it on Facebook, but here is the here's that short URL. The the most helpful thing will be that those five links at the end of the web page. Okay, that was uh, eight minutes. Hopefully, it wasn't too long. This is a really great tool for you guys to use if you're beginning web development. So, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks for sorry for st starting the thirty minutes. Sorry for going over for 30 minutes, but hey, did you hack hard? Yeah, well, I use that. No, that sounds like something that, that hack hard, that's kind of gay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, thanks so much for coming. Come out on Wednesday, come out next Tuesday. What the hell is the thing? The thing that's recording. Don't tell me it didn't record. Please. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, 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 what happened there? I don't know what happened. I hate this. Yeah, yeah. I, I have components are too hard to explain. I try to do polygon for a while. It's like time JavaScript in your game. The way they do it, like, they want the modules, they, 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 want, they want to make sure like, make sure it's HTML, like, like, but like, they put the layer of JavaScript on it. Okay, I think you're...